Joining me now, one of the main players in those negotiations, Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer. It's great to have you, uh, Senator. Hi, Chris. I-, I believe you were in the negotiations this afternoon, which I think was the first round. Can you just give us an update of where things stand? Yeah, well, first, the Republicans are, as you say, in total chaos. They've been in chaos for months, and that's why they couldn't put get their act together. And we're up to these cliffs where people lose unemployment benefits, may be kicked out of their homes, uh, don't have money to feed their folks, their kids. It's just a disgrace what their bill does. There are so many needs here. And here's the fundamental problem, Chris. This is the greatest economic crisis we've had in 75 years since the Depression, the greatest health crisis in 100 years. You need the government to help. But our Republican friends on the hard right say only the private sector should be involved. And the private sector, even on its own admission, can't solve this. So they end up with this horrible bill that favors corporate interests. How about this? They want to give a break, a tax break for the three martini lunch, but no more money for food stamps and people to feed their folks. They want a $30 billion cushion for the defense industry and no money, no cushion for people who are going to lose their homes. Uh, They put in there this boondoggle for President Trump, the $2 billion, so that he doesn't have to compete next to another hotel and tell workers they should take a 30% pay cut even when they've lost, (coughs) excuse me, even when they've lost their job through no fault of their own. This is a giveaway to corporate interests. We Democrats are standing firm. We know the needs are real. We know the needs are deep. We know working people need help, and we are going to fight for the very strong and very bold uh, bill that the House passed called the HEROES Act. So... It seems to me that McConnell has telegraphed something about his priorities from the beginning. He cares about one thing, and that's liability. He wants indemnification for uh, employers, for hospitals, for schools, for all sorts of people. He's been very clear about this. I don't think he cares one way or the other about anything else. It's the only thing he cared about. He laid that out very clearly today. Take a listen to what he had to say. There is no chance, zero chance, America can get back to normal without the Cornyn liability protection. And no bill will be put on the Senate floor that does not include it. Well, that's is, the, is the liability it's, protection language acceptable to you? Not at all. It is so extreme. You heard you said before what McConnell said. We don't think we need things not extraneous, uh, extraneous to COVID. You know what's in this bill? No medical malpractice suits till 2024, even if they're not COVID related. What it says is if a employer. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Really? That's in the bill. Yes, it's in the bill. It's amazing. This is a K Street corporate lawyer wish list. And of course, it's not going to pass. And when McConnell says no bill will come on the floor without this very extreme bill, maybe he doesn't want anything to pass altogether. But that would be we Democrats are going to keep pushing to get something done because it's so important. But his bill is extreme to the nth. It's not going. But here's the thing about the leverage, right? So if. If McConnell doesn't if McConnell doesn't care one way or the other, half his caucus, Ben Sass came out today against it. Lindsey Graham saying half the caucus won't vote for it. Right. It, I, I read a Republican lobbyist who said you might as well hand the Democrats the pen, meaning you your minority caucus in the Senate and the combined with the House should have all the leverage here because it does seem like well. they're going to count on your caucus to pass this. Yeah, well, you know, obviously we don't have a majority in the Senate and we can't pass it alone, but we have a lot of leverage and we're going to use it. We're going to fight hard so that state and local governments get the close to trillion dollars they need. We're going to fight hard so that there's heroes pay. We're going to fight hard for money for the post office. We're going to fight hard so that we give money so that there's uh, people can vote fairly and they can vote by mail and there are ample polling places. We have a lot of leverage and we ain't afraid to use it. But but here seems to me the asymmetry that I always see when I watch these negotiations. It does seem to me like there are a fair amount of Republican senators who just don't care if this thing passes or not. I think a lot of them think this year's a wash anyway. They want to clean their hands. They want to position themselves for future presidential runs. They want to be the ones that stood up against big government, yada, yada, yada. I think Democrats do care. I think Democrats in the House care. And I think you care because you care about what happens to people, the working people. <laughs> if this doesn't we don't go want through. people to lose their right, we don't want people to 
lose their jobs, lose their businesses, not feed their kids. Of course we care. We have to. We're Democrats. We care about people. But that, but at this point in time, since they're in such disarray, the only people who may want things are the things who got those corporate wish list things in on the Republican side. We have leverage. And, you know, in the last three bills, the same thing happened. McConnell said, let's do very little. We Democrats said no. And they were forced to come back to the table and we got most of what we wanted. The person who should really want something to happen actually is Trump. Because if the economy goes to hell in a handbasket, which it will do if we don't pass anything, he's finished. He may be finished anyway, but he's certainly finished if that happens. But this is what a so bizarre world about the entire dynamic here. I don't get it. I mean, because I don't they, either. They don't, if you're Donald they Trump don't. and the Republicans, you should be raining trillions of dollars down into the economy in the election year because it's the last hope for anything politically. Here's what they here's what they think. Let them eat cake. They have so many. This is our, our hometown paper, the Daily News, and it has a picture of McConnell. Let them eat cake. They are so enthralled by the right wing ideologues who say don't spend any government money that they're not even doing what would be, let alone good for the country, even in their own self-interest. So you're right. It is bizarre. It is totally bizarre. But they are totally at war with themselves. When we have negotiations, McConnell won't even show up. He wasn't in the room today, right? Nope. He was not. He was not. What what is up with? I just don't get. So basically, McConnell's position well, he's got is a, he's got a caucus. I run the Senate, he, but I don't. Yeah, he's got a caucus that, as you said, Lindsey Graham, Roy Blunt, who said 25 of them don't want to vote for anything. Here we have the greatest crisis in America in health and in um, economy that we've had in a long time. We have the highest number of unemployed since the Great Depression. And these guys' hands are tied so that they don't want to or can't do anything. It is utterly pathetic. It would be, a, it would be laughable, except so, so much is at stake because people are hurting and need these benefits. People need that $600 for unemployment. People need help so they're not evicted from their homes. People need help so they can feed their kids, run their small businesses. And we're going to fight to get it for them. Final question. You moratorium for renters in FHA backed properties. There's a foreclosure moratorium as well. The eviction moratorium is basically running out. There's, I think, 20 million people uh, who are subject to that. How important is that in this round? Very, is that do or die for you? Very important. And what we've proposed is better than just extending the moratorium where people still owe rent. So if it's after three months, if there's a three month eviction uh, moratorium, you still owe three months. We have proposed $100 billion to help people who have lost their jobs, lost their income through no fault of their own, pay their rent. And remember, some of these, some right. of these landlords are big shots, but some are like in my neighborhood. It's a three family house. The landlords, who the owner's on the top floor, the two other tenants are on the other two floors, and they, they need money to help pay for the heat and the electricity. So we pay, we propose $100 billion, what is more than, ad, what is adequate, just right, um, that the experts say, to help people who have lost their incomes pay their rent so they're not evicted. Very important Senator for us. Senator Chuck Schumer, uh, who will be part of the negotiation team, hopefully this gets sorted out sooner rather than later. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate it. 